Why don't you vote for Trump? You might as well admit me in a sane asylum. A man that look at women as nothing but something to play with. A man who exchange women like a used car lot. A man that lies so much he believe his own lies until God says a liar won't tarry in my sight. The Lord said six things through our hate. Seven is an abomination before me. A proud look, a lying tongue. He's a compulsive liar. And then you uh, media out there, amen, film him while he's in some false church with a bunch of hypocrites singing and he's just standing there. <laughs> Choir singing and he's clapping. What you get out of that? Have never repented? And that's the problem with you religious fakers because a politician go to church and sing some so-called Christian songs right away. You label him and her a Christian. Do you mean to tell me all somebody got to do is sing about Jesus and you a Christian? All somebody got, you can say the name Jesus to a parrot. Tell the parrot, Jesus, Jesus, ah, he'll, he'll get it for a while. Yeah, Jesus, ah, Jesus, Jesus. I dare you to tell me that feather critter is a Christian. It's more to being Christ-like than going to some church and stomping your feet and clapping your hands. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And he commandeth all men everywhere to repent. He command a man to leave your father. Pastor Gino Jennings has strongly criticized the notion of voting for Donald Trump or Kamala Harris, arguing that both candidates contradict biblical values and lack genuine Christian principle. Jennings points to Trump's perceived dishonesty, disrespect towards women, and racial insensitivity as behaviors that defy the teachings of the Bible. He emphasizes that simply attending church or outwardly showing religious devotion does not make someone a Christian. True faith requires repentance and obedience to God's commandment. According to Jennings, supporting either Trump or Harris in an election equates to endorsing values contrary to biblical teachings as both candidates are viewed as unrepentant sinners who do not embody godly virtues. This white preacher, amen, and he's a false prophet, but his members try to tell him that it is uh, a, a, a Christian responsibility to vote. He, he told his whole congregation, you are a bunch of liars. It is no uh, obligation of mine to vote. He said, my obligation is to please Christ. That's what my obligation is. Voting is a choice. What do you get from it? What do you get out of it? When they get in the White House, who live up to their promise? The only reason why some of you vote for Trump is because he gave you a big check during COVID. That's why some of you big, you don't want to work no way. Many of you don't want to work. You want to give that free money. Amen. Some of you are so lazy and full of hell. You are go to hell with a check in your hand. Amen. You hear me good, human family. I know you don't like Pastor Jennings, and I really don't care if none of you ever do. I'm going to testify against the world because you're evil. You're evil. Everything under the sun that's against God, you're evil. And the celebrities get on board. Why? To help people vote. And when and some folk ask me, Pastor Jenny, why you don't vote? 
I cannot support one thing that has sent me to hell for it. I can't vote for Kamala. I can't. Why not, Pastor Jennings? How can I preach against same-sex marriages and then cast my ballot for someone that firmly believes it? Pastor Gino Jennings views voting as a personal decision rather than a Christian obligation, emphasizing that many cast their ballots out of self-interest rather than genuine responsibility. He personally rejects candidates like Kamala Harris and Donald Trump due to their stances on issues that contradict biblical teachings, such as abortion and same-sex marriage. For Jennings, these positions go against God's commandments, particularly the sanctity of life as reflected in the Bible's commandment, Thou shall not kill. Regardless of a candidate's gender or historical significance, Jennings prioritizes living by holy standards, which he believes neither Harris nor Trump upholds. His stance underscores his commitment to aligning political choices with a faith-centered life. I have to take this, baby. Everything I said about the Democrats and the Republicans, about the poor, you out there that like to slice up my message, take that excerpt, take that part. Amen. Put it on Facebook and put it on Instagram and put it on everywhere else and see what these Trump lovers and Harris lovers say then. Not one! Mention the poor, not one. That is true. You don't hear a governor mention it. You don't hear a mayor mention it. No bill is passed in Congress to deal with poor. Poor, not middle class, not rich rascals. Poor! Woman can't afford to buy milk. Living in the street. Children walk around full of lice. Roaches all in their clothes and lice all covering their hair. You can't even tell what race the child is because they're covered with dirt having watched in over five months, and they can't. In America. And you that got or are able to come and go as you please, well, you don't know how that got there. Who cares how they got there? They're there. Right. What time you got the nick pick over the poor? How they got there? They're there. What is America going to do about it? They're there. Some of the poorest people is a few blocks from the White House. That is true. Some of the poorest people is a few blocks right from the Walk of Fame in Hollywood, the Star Walk of Fame. That is true. People sleeping in boxes. What governor put together a program to do something? You bunch of Uncle Tom religious hypocrites. Pastor Gino Jennings is outspoken about how politicians from both major parties exploit the poor for their votes, only to neglect them once in office. He observes that leaders from both sides fail to address the real struggles of impoverished communities, instead focusing their agendas on other issues that often serve the interests of the wealthy and middle class. Jennings sees this cycle as a betrayal of trust, where candidates make grand promises during campaigns, but bring no meaningful change to the lives of those most in need. He likens their token offerings to mere cheese that causes discomfort, providing only minimal, short-term relief without tackling the root causes of poverty. According to Jennings, American political campaigns repeatedly overlook the poor, sidelining their needs while benefiting from their support, which he believes reflects a lack of genuine compassion and commitment to uplifting all people. I know someone said, Pastor Jennings, I disagree with you. I'm not your problem. You got to go to the Bible. I'm not your problem. If it was left up to me, I would vote for Harris right now. In fact, I would tell the whole church to vote for him. 
if it were left up to me. But uh, I can't do that. I have to look at what she said. I have to look at what Trump said. I have to look at what she believed. I have to look at what Trump believed. I have to look at her convictions. I have to look at Trump convictions. And then I have to take them both and go to say, see, do God believe this? See, do God believe that? Is that God conviction? Do God feel that way? How do God think? What do God say? When I cast that ballot, I want God to say, Amen! Amen. That's it. Hallelujah! Good teaching. Good I teaching. don't care who don't agree with me. I'm talking Bible here. That's it. You have to set God first in your decision making. This is why we're telling politicians, get out of, uh, stop looking at things from so much of a political perspective and look at God. And when you look at God, you will move with fear for him. And your decision making, you won't be so easily forgetting poor folk. Right. The reason why you Republicans can forget poor folk so quick, because you forget God. Jesus said the poor you have with you always. Trump said, uh, he's the richest so-and-so. I'm going to cut all your taxes. I'm going to cut all your taxes. Well, Kamala wanted to give middle-class people a chance. That's good. She wanted to give middle-class people. And, I, and, and, and let me say this. I wonder moreover, why do politicians always talk about middle-class as if there's no other class of people in the world? They say if, they, if you raise the middle class, that means everybody can come up. That's a lie. Pastor Gino Jennings believes that voting should be rooted in biblical values, prioritizing compassion for the poor, and aligning with God's teachings rather than personal preferences or party loyalties. He argues that true Christian responsibility involves choosing leaders who will genuinely address the needs of the impoverished rather than supporting candidates who only focus on the wealthy and middle class while neglecting society's most vulnerable. Jennings stresses that politicians from both parties often engage with issues like poverty and homelessness only superficially during campaign season, failing to bring about real change. For Jennings, meaningful voting aligns with biblical principles emphasizing the importance Jesus placed on caring for the poor and marginalized. What do you think about this? Let us know in the comments section below. I'll catch you guys in the next one.